Podcast. I'm here to my co-host, Nicholas Todd. Hey, really. What up, y'all? What up, what up? And today's a special episode. We have our first official guest. What's up, everyone? No Easter egg this time. Official. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> <Visually. laughs> official. This one's official. So we have an author slash... Uh, paranormal investigator. Paranormal investigator. Slash holy man slash... Uh, Railroader. 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 <laughs> slash slash college, cell phone. College, cell phone seller. <laughs> college student. College father. Student, husband. Father. <laughs> Uh, I slash more. older <laughs> brother. <laughs> oh, I got I got your resume right here. <laughs> slash my older brother. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. So how long have you known Nick? Uh, <laughs> um, I've known him for about ten years. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Who are you? <laughs> no, we um twenty seven years old. He's twenty four. So oh, we've known dang. each other. I'm 23. You're 20. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> he missed a year. <laughs> yeah, I will be 24 next year. <laughs> Where about you? Real good. <laughs> he's, he's just fresh off the trains. So. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, we'll go back to your author. Like, what inspired you to write your book, and how did that process What's it pull called? out? What's yeah. your book called? First? Well, my book is called. Um, Journeys with the Young Spirit, Abalon. And it features actually one of our deities from our tribe. And kind of my little backstory is when I was 13 years old, I was selected to be part of like a warrior society. Yeah. And I was one of four people that was selected. And uh, with the Navajo Nation, we are given sa- we have sacred mountains. And us four were designated sacred mountains to protect and take care of. And so we had to learn our sacred mountains in and backwards, forwards, in and out, everything on our sacred mountains. And one of them that uh, I was given is the Coat Sleet, which is the San Francisco Peaks of Flagstaff. I'm the guardian of the Western Mountain. And my book is a, pretty much the story of Avalon Shellboy, but more of like a firsthand account, what he went through, what he experienced, and kind of giving some backstory of, of, of him and how he became a guardian of the mountain. And so it's a pretty interesting book that... Uh, coming of age of a warrior back then coming of age and what he learned back in his time and every chapter features uh, a, a teaching every chapter chapter features something that's of value to yeah. uh, the youth yeah and so um, it's uh, it's a four-part series i've only done part one I'm working i was, on I was about to now. say you said it's part one and it's a four-part series so are you in the process of writing the next one or are you going to let it sit a while? So it, you let uh, it marinate? <laughs> so that took me, in all honesty, that took me about, what, five years or yeah. more to write? Yeah. And it's not even that big of a book or anything like yeah. that. But pretty much it's uh, part two, mm-hmm. same process. For some reason, I just get done writing a few paragraphs and I feel like I got done running a marathon. So <laughs> part two <laughs> is in the works. Uh, I, with every sentence, you, he says a prayer and runs a ceremony. Like for real, I have to <laughs> interpret the, the, the ancient the language and then I have to put it into English. That's step one. And then be able to put it into a story and be able to make it interesting on top of that. Yeah. So there's a whole process to that. Yeah, so and then you showed me, like, I I was with him during the whole process of when he was actually writing his book and everything, and I thought it was, like, so awesome and everything to yeah. witness him, like, write a book, and I was just like, holy crap, you know, this is going to be, like, the new next, uh, um... J- J.K. Rowling? Uh, Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Lord of the Rings. <laughs> new, the new Lord of the Rings right here, so... And yeah, it's on Amazon right now. I, I'm uh, I'm looking it up on Amazon. So, <laughs> it's uh, we'll it like nine ninety nine yeah. with Amazon Prime. It's free delivery. You could so, have it. You could have it. Um, next day shipping. It's all. <laughs> it's all. Buy it now before we upcharge it. <laughs> <laughs> it becomes too famous. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and just watching and and he showed me parts yeah. of like book two and all that, and it definitely I've read the whole book like multiple times, and it has like really great teachings in there and really yeah. cool imagery and storyline and when i read it it was like it honestly felt like i was actually there and when i was there it kind of takes me back to like the setting of the time that they were at and the teachings that go along with it i still use on a day-to-day basis which is like really really cool so he showed me parts of book two i'm excited for it and it's really awesome yeah so um and yeah so go out 
buy a package now <laughs> greatly <Yeah>. appreciated <laughs> so so dave what was your process when you started writing were you just on like microsoft word like typing up your stories and then so you got the book and then you took it to a publisher or so actually this is actually a self-published book yeah and so i was looking for a publisher but it, in today's world it's very cutthroat as far as for publishing a book yeah. so i'm like you know my story is a very sacred story and then uh has a lot of teachings to it. So I, I kind of want a little bit more control rather than giving a bunch of other people yeah. rights to it. So I like, okay, how do I self-publish? And uh, Amazon actually came up. It's uh, have they have a self-publishing tool. Wow. And oh. uh, they actually helped me um, create the whole art of cover, the, the format of it. It was all basically Microsoft Word on an old laptop that uh, – now the battery don't work on it. So. <laughs> rest, in, rest in peace. Rest in peace to that laptop. But, <laughs> but yeah, it was it was a really interesting process to learn how to self-publish a book. Yeah. And create everything basically from the story to the format, how it looks, and then even marketing it myself. It's been a very humbling experience. So, well, I, I have a question. So. Tell us about some of the customers and where they're located at. Where, where yeah, people are yeah. buying. Well, okay. Do so, you, you get the data? Like, do you get the metrics? Of, like, yeah. So when they're buying it, Amazon actually provides me with all the metrics on it yeah. and everything about it. What was really interesting is when this f first came out, about I'd say about five months after it came out, I was actually entered into a storyteller contest over in France and Germany, and what? yeah, That's I won crazy. five thousand dollars from that storyteller contest. And they over overseas, they they eat this stuff up. So in actuality, my number one sales are in France and Germany. So we know we're touring next. We <laughs> <laughs> oui, oui. <laughs> oui, oui. we. So yes. so we have global David Avery Lee with us. Global. We're going. We're going. Was it international? International. <laughs> No, I, that was amazing to, yeah, to, to see. see. Like when I, the numbers were first coming in, yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, my books went out there to other countries. And it's like, there's someone overseas that are at, taking the time to read the story that I wrote. And it, it's, it's really cool. It's kind of crazy because I feel like I've been on Nick's YouTube channel too, that we look at our metrics and it's like, some people are actually watching this. Like mm -hmm. some people we don't even know. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like, it's probably the same thing with your book where it's like, people are reading it. Like, People appreciate the work and the art that it is, and from a different country, and you don't know who they are. Yeah, totally. I remember uh, somebody, like a social media like influencer, said sometimes like your biggest fans are people you don't know, mm -hmm. and that's that's true. It's like to be honest, like uh, a lot of people who enjoy your craft, enjoy the art, are people who, who don't know you. Yeah, that's that's definitely how we felt yeah. with our channel too. We're just like some. It just starts out when people start commenting on your stuff. It's just like who are you <laughs> we're like okay there's someone from florida it's like you should check out our local library over here that's states away we <laughs> definitely want to but like we're still a, a tiny channel but we're growing <laughs> <laughs> so are there any things that you've learned from the first book that you've made that you yeah. want to like kind of uh just some uh hurdles that you've had in the first book that you want to improve on in the second book so I'm a lot more organized with my second uh, book, and I've actually kind of already have the the, the outline for the next uh, three books, as well as outline from a bunch of other books that I plan to write. Yeah. yeah. So um, definitely outlining it, the planning for it, uh, being able to be a lot more organized with it, and then just actually developing my own writing style yeah. and my own artistic way of, of, of writing something that's starting to develop and I'm like okay so this is how I write this is how it's gonna flow and mm -hmm. this is how it's gonna be so it, it the first book's always gonna be rough the first time doing something's rough yeah, yeah. the more you definitely, do it definitely. the more you do it the more you get used to it it starts flowing more it becomes more natural yeah so uh, <clears throat> I was gonna say who uh, like who's your writers that you looked up to when you were growing up like who did you read like George R. R. Martin J.K. Rowling it was um uh, king. like tolkien and king and then there's my one of my favorite books growing up was actually the griffin series it's um, yeah. black griffin silver griffin and white griffin and those books as a junior it was a junior high when i really started picking things up yeah and like for some reason it took me away from from school it took me away from my my current 
status of being just a human and it was a fantasy book that really kind of brought me into the world that they were trying to create and i want to be able to do that to bring people into the world that is here yeah. and make it feel like they're there right along with the heroes and right along the characters of the story and feel what they feel so are you a fiction reader or do you read nonfiction, or you do like a combination of both a kind of a combination of both um i like to read um mainly fiction but when i was in fourth grade i actually read over 115 uh non-fiction books and the the <laughs> That's a lot the of AR points. That's a lot of AR <laughs> points. I, I just want to let AR you, points. I, I just, exactly. I just want to let everybody know that's the most books I've read in my entire life. Right. I, remember, <laughs> I remember I used to get the Harry Potter book and then just guess at the answers and hope I get like seven out of ten or something and get base, four partial just points. Base it off the movie. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 it used I, to work. It used to know, work. Okay, the only book that didn't work on is Aragon. You guys remember that dragon book? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I got that book and I tried taking the AR test for it. And I failed miserably because the book and the movie are nothing alike. <laughs> yeah, <you know>? <laughs> <laughs> straight up came to me. He was just like, did you just read the, watch the movie and try guessing off the book? And I was just like, yeah. He's like, I could tell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you read, uh, what was it? So the motive behind that yeah. was, in all honesty, at the end of the year, whoever um, had the most AR points and read the most books would get a free dinner. And I was going to school in Flagstaff at the time. So I'm like, I want this free food. I was, I was, <laughs> that was my motive. <laughs> food was my motive. <laughs> so I read over 115 books. I'd literally go to the library. I'd go to the nonfiction section. There were tiny little books that were talking about different animals. And half an error point, half an error point, half an error point. And it just started <laughs> just eating them up. And I'd be taking a test every day. And that's why I always go to him if I have a question. Yeah. <laughs> I always used to use, get the big book and then like read that for the whole semester and then you get like the 30 points or whatever. Well, we went for the bare minimum. Yeah. <laughs> we like, I wasn't a reader. Okay, I wasn't a reader. Because <laughs> like, well, there's, there's a lot of like smarter kids like you in our class. We're just like, there's no way we can beat them. <laughs> we're always good at math. Like me and Nick were always in the same math class. And yeah. We always did the bare minimum there. <laughs> Somehow pass pass all the tests. Right. <laughs> doing the bare minimum homework. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that'll end this uh this podcast. Thank you for watching. Click like and subscribe, and we'll go buy the book. It's a really, really good product. It's on Amazon right now. For